Today we will be creating our first um, object-oriented program and in order to do so, just like before, we will be right-clicking on the project, choosing new class. The name of this class is employee. Since I already have a class with that name, that is why Eclipse has already given me a warning saying whatever you are trying to create already exists. So let's call this one employee2. We'll check the main, uncheck the inherited abstract methods, and we're going to create finish. Once we click finish, we can get rid of the comments, and this is my class structure. Now we, what we would like to do here is that we would like to create properties of the class. A class is very much like a everyday object which has properties and behaviors. Considering employee 2 to be a class, let's create a private property employee name. The reason we are creating properties as private because uh, usually Java programmers would like to hide or encapsulate the underlying properties of the class and the only way they would uh, allow people or users to access these properties is through the getters and the setters. Now a getter or a setter are special functions or, or they are special purpose methods that are used to access or modify the value of a property. So in Java, to access a value of a property, Java programmers often use a method called getter. And to change the value of a property, Java programmers will often use a method called setter. Now the word getter or setter has no particular significance in the Java as a language. These are just writing conventions. So, since I know that my getter will be used to get the value of a property, therefore my getter should be created as public so that it's accessible. It should return something because it is being used to get a value. And by convention, most of the getters are created with the keyword get, just so that it's a self-documentation. So get EMP name. And it's given me an error because I'm missing a return statement. And as, as soon as I put my return statement in place, that goes away. Similarly, I can create a setter. Setters are only used for setting a value, so they don't, they don't return anything. And that is why we would like to create them as voids. And setters will receive a parameters from outside. And those parameters will be used to set the value for a class property. So now we have created a class called employee2 with a property called EMP name. In order to access this property from outside of the class or from inside of the class, we're going to use a property called get EMP name. To change the value of this property, we're going to use a property called set EMP name. These are called the getters and the setters. It is very important to understand that in Java there are two different kinds of methods or behaviors static, non-static. If you notice in getter as well as setter we have not used the word static but we use the word static in the main which is another behavior. The static behaviors are considered class level behaviors so only one copy of such behaviors is maintained in the memory. On the other hand the non-static methods are object-level methods that mean each object will go to maintain a copy of its behaviors. And the reason we do that is because we can have several objects of a class. I can have employee 1, I can have employee 2. Each object of the class type will going to hold a value for employee name. So when I call set EMP name on employee 1, I will be only interested in setting the name for employee 1, not employee 2. And when I call 
employee1.getEMP name, I will be interested in only pulling out the employee name for the employee1, not employee2. So since these methods are specific to the objects, not classes, that's why these are considered non-static. Now, let me also reiterate on the concept of object versus variable. If a data type of an entity such as int x, as I know that int is a data type and it's a primitive data type, so if a data type of an entity is a primitive type, we considered it a variable, like so x is a variable. If a data type of an entity is a class, like in this case string is a class, so str will not be considered a variable, rather it will be considered an object. So considering that, we will be now interested in creating object of employee class, employee 2 class, in fact, because the name of our class is employee 2. And it's very important to understand the syntax. Employee 2 is the name of the class. Employee 1 is the object name. The keyword new is used to allocate memory for the object. And as you have noticed, we have repeated the employee 2, which is the name of the class, again on both sides. This is called the class. And this is a special method of the class, which has the exact same name as that of a class. We call it constructor. Constructor is a special method of the class that is used to initialize the properties of the class. So in object creation, we have to make sure that we have class name, which serves as a data type for the object. And now we will be interested in allocating some more memory, some new memory for this object. And we are also interested in initializing the attributes of this particular object. Now, after we have created the object, we will now be interested in using the object to call the respective behaviors. As you can see, Eclipse gives you all sorts of behaviors, but as soon as I type set, it gives me only the setters, and now I can say the name is Anthony. And since I have been able to set the name for the employee, let's try to retrieve this name to see that the name has actually been placed in the object. And now let's running the code, let's try running the code. As you can see in the console, that employee name is Anthony, and that's exactly what we placed in this object, employee one. So now we have been able to successfully put a name in the object and be able to retrieve it. Just like we can create one object, we can create two objects, but we have to make sure that you can't have two objects with the same name. So I'm just simply doing a copy paste here. It's the same set of instructions that promotes reusability. And here it says employee one name is Anthony and employee two name is Abby. So we have been able to successfully create multiple objects of the same class type and we were able to call them and we were able to set the properties of the class and we were able to retrieve the properties of the class. Hope you would have enjoyed the video. Thank you.